Hello, everyone. So I'm from Spain, you know, we <laughs> are very energetic. Um, I'm so energetic that I've realized that they've given me like more than an hour to talk. I think they know me and they said, okay, he's gonna go over time. So you're already planning for me going over time, which I'll try not to do. Um, so I've really enjoyed the talks today. I think they were really nice. And a lot of them actually touch on a bunch of things that I'm gonna talk about. And my talk is gonna be weird. It's going to be strange. I'm not going to talk about lean startups. I'm not going to talk about business models. I'm not going to talk about the investment. I'm going to talk about philosophy. Who recognizes that, that quote? Raise your hand if you ever heard that quote before or a similar quote. Similar quote. No one? Which is a, what, what's the original quote? You know the original quote? This is, if I say Bruce Lee, everyone? Yes, Bruce Lee, okay, the guy in the yellow shit doing the dragon thing, whoa, that thing. A lot of us have grown with that. Um, well, there's an interview and he talked about um, the nature of how people should be. And at one point he talks about being water and he tells the interviewer, he said like, my friend, be water, my friend. If the water comes into the kettle, it becomes the kettle. If water pours into a cup, it becomes the cup. It's very philosophical shit. So we're gonna talk about that. So bear with me. So let's see if this works or not. Oh, there you go. So who am I? What have I done? Um, so I've been doing startups for seven years. As you see, I'm not rich because if I, was, if I had been rich, I had been flying on my plane or being somewhere in Barbados or something like that. Um, but I do have done a lot of miserable failures along my career. I started many years ago with my first company, then I worked with the largest social network in Spain, then launched the first, one of the first accelerators slash pre-accelerators in Europe. Uh, through there, I became a venture partner at a VC firm, Okuri Ventures, and through there, we launched Startup Bootcamp uh, Europe, which you probably know, uh, some of you, and I left all that, I said, why am I investing? I don't like investing, it's really painful if you, ever become an investor, you'll see, and you haven't been a banker previously, you realize it's a fucking boring job. And so I left all that, created my third company, which is Press42, which makes money, which is nice. Uh, I was um, editor at the Kernel magazine, which recently relaunched in August. Um, I'm a global shaper from the World Economical Forum, and I am happy to unveil the new logo for Tech Europe, uh, who here has gone to Slash? Was in Slash uh, last week or this week? Uh, do you guys know Robin Waters? Well, he's my partner. We've launched Tech Europe together, and he just unveiled the new logo. So I'm happy to say that that's my fourth company. Working with Robin, first time working with Robin, so I don't know how that's gonna be. I think uh, Caleb asked me, like, how is it going? It's like, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, literally, we haven't been the whole team together in the same country yet. So. That's that, let's see how it works. So as you see, I've done a bunch of stuff. I'm, as I said, there you go. Approach this talk with an open mind, okay? Approach this talk as the word of experience and not like a stage one, step one, step two, step three thing, okay? So every time you talk about startups, there is failure in it. You know, there's rainbows, there's unicorns, and there's failure. And everyone keeps talking about failure here, failure there, lessons learned, blah, blah, blah. Now, the thing is, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of my story on how this ended up, or I ended up thinking about failure in very different terms to what most people do. How many of you here are doing your first startup? Raise your hand, most of you. Who here is doing their second startup? A bunch. Who here is doing the third startup? One? Fourth? Hey, there's some people doing front. There you go. Those are my boys. Okay, so most of you are either on your first or your second. So you've gone or you've experienced some of this. So this was my first startup uh, seven years ago. Learn a lot. But this is what happened. When you do your first startup, for those of you that are new to this, you become this guy, okay? It's like, 
I'm the entrepreneur, you know, now it's kind of trendy. You go to a club, there's a whole queue, and you go like, uh, can I go in? It's like, no, are you on the list? It's like, no, but uh, I have a startup. They go like, oh, oh, please come in, okay? It's kind of trendy now to be an entrepreneur. So you're like this bossy guy, like, eh, you know, you can look all your friends that are working corporate jobs and go like, Ha, you're working for the man, you know, I'm, I'm a self-made person. So you become this arrogant, stupid person. Um, but at the same time, you are also like this, you know, you, you do care about what people think. So because you care about what people think, you know, if everyone is doing Movember and everyone has mustaches, you do Movember, you know, and if everyone's wearing like this black rim kind of glasses, you, you wear them too, you know, so yeah, you're arrogant, but you also do care a lot about what others think about you, uh, what others say about your startup, how good it is, is it gonna raise money, is it, is it not gonna raise money, or is it working or not? Now, reality is that despite being like that, at one point you realize that your traction kind of goes like this, so you have to look in the mirror and you go like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be that arrogant, you know, maybe I have an issue here. And this is, this is the moment where things like uh, Business Model Sync and, and Lean Startup and all that stuff happens. And you read the book. Who has read the book? Come on, be honest. Who that has read the book actually does it? There you go. <laughs> so we've been there, haven't we, huh? So you read the book, you think, wow, this is gonna change my life. So that's a moment where you start going like, let's, let's pivot, you know, uh, we're not doing this right. You know, no, no, no traction, and uh, Matt was just saying about this, you know, uh, a lot of uh, points of sale, but that there's something that's not working. Let's pivot here, and that's the word. You know, you do it with a straight face. It's not failure, we're not failing. You know, we're not failing, this is pivoting. This is being agile. So <laughs> you go with all this story and uh, you start doing interviews. They've told you, you have to do interviews. You have to talk to the customers. You have to go out of the building. So you go out of the building, but of course, as someone said before, um, yeah, the customer is retarded. It's not my problem, they don't get it, you know? And you sit down doing all these interviews and the typical question is, so would you need an automatic uh, growing planting system. And you know what people say? Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. You know, sounds good. There's a kind of thing, that's the first quote you ever get when you go to sell, sell something is, yeah, yeah, that's very nice. Uh, yeah, call us when it's more developed. <laughs> so you start learning that that's not a good thing, you know, when people tell you that. But still, you do interviews and you keep doing all this thing. And time goes by. You keep iterating, you keep pivoting, you keep interviewing more people, and still traction is not there. And so, at the back of your mind, you have this nagging feeling that something is really fucked up with your company. You know, you, you still are not at the point where you can literally say, I fucked it up, okay? <laughs> this is not working, I need to do something else. But you know, it's your first company, it's your baby. So like a baby is like, even if your baby's ugly, you're not gonna say like, <laughs> you know, let's change the baby. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. So you, 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 but there's this thing in the back of your mind that ke keeps nagging at you. And that was a point when, um, after doing this for two years, I told myself, like, uh, I need help. So I said, well, who can I go out and talk with people that can share the same issues I'm having with my company? Um, and of course, I live in Spain, so either you're flamenco, you do toros, or you like paella, or you're a German tourist, or UK tourist, and, but there's no one else. So I was on my own, and I said like, well, like a good entrepreneur, if there aren't people like me, I'm gonna brainwash people to be like me. You know, realistic kind of shit. So <laughs> we launched Tetwin Valley, which was a pre-acceleration program five years ago. And uh, this was uh, several years ago, um, we did a, a convention with all our former, all or, or, or for our alumni. And uh, this was an incredible story, uh, how we thought this wasn't gonna work and how everyone came to us, everyone looking for help. We had teams flying from Singapore, paying on their own just to be in our program. And so what happened was at the same time I was running Tetuan Valley for the sake of you know, doing something for the community, and at the same time I was doing my startup. And at one point you go like, 
this is successful, you know? This Teton Valley shit that I just designed when, on my free time and I'm devoting my free time to do, it's just freaking successful. And what you could actually see the difference was, you know, as I said, when I was talking with the customers on Inksy, the feeling wasn't the same. When I talked with people that had gone through the program in Teton Valley, it was like, dude, you changed my life. And I was like, whoa. So something just suddenly clicks, and you look like this. You go like, I really failed with my other company, <laughs> really. I mean, if this is what success is, then I definitely fail on my other company. So you get to this point where you have to, I had the luck of actually having to decide between one company or the other one. And so I started really thinking about this and thinking, am I a failure? You know, I've done two things. One is working really well. The other one, it's not that it's not working, but it's just like not really showing a lot of traction. And how do you, how do you deal with that? And for me, it was really hard. For, for someone that has been raised, you know, gone to university and everyone praises you and says like, oh, you're a good student, you're a, a bright mind, you blah, blah, blah. And suddenly you've, you have this kind of, you know, cake there, really nasty cake that you don't know what to do with it. You know, this is the kind of thing that, especially guys, you, you've had this before. You go, maybe not here in Estonia, but definitely happens anywhere else in the world. You, open, you go to the office, you open the fridge, and there, there, there's this nasty thing in the fridge. You know, someone forgot to take it away. And, but no one wants to touch it, you know? Well, this is the same feeling with your startup. You know, it is there. You see, it is rotting, but no one wants to touch that stuff. And so I started thinking about failure and about what failure meant and, and, and what was it? What, was I willing to actually admit that I was wrong, that that didn't work? Because I had a lot of discussions with my partners also on the other company, and they were forcing me. They were saying, you know, this is never going to take off. You should stay with us, stick with Ted and Valley, and do your stuff. And so for me, it was a really stressful moment of, uh, and, and I think I haven't even gotten over it, because the website's still up from my previous, previous, previous startup. You know, it's that, that tiny thing. It's like, it's not until there is no more domain that it still lives, you know? But um, it is true that I started thinking about failure. Like, what is really failure? Uh, and, you know, your mind is very intelligent, so your mind keeps trying to find loopholes around the definition of failure because you don't want to fail. So it's like, okay, how can I describe failure in a different way so I'm actually not failing? This is when a lot of people say, like, oh, no, you're learning. It's like, mm, yes, you know, but there's something else to it. So I looked up the definition of failure. And so this is what the Merriam-Webster say. Just say, okay, <laughs> lack of success. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so I said, OK, now, hey, we can go very deep into this. So what is success? Huh? Huh? Define success. Because here's where we start getting into a really crazy definition of what success is. So I looked it up. And so success is a favorable or desired outcome. And then is when things start getting a little bit fuzzy. Because what is a favorable or desired outcome? For whom? It's favorably, favorable for me? Favorable for her? Favorable for them? Is it for the camels? Who desires this? Who desires this outcome? Is it really me who desires to get that? Or is it my mom? Okay? I don't know if you've had that, but in Spain, this is a big deal. You know, mama, she's hard. You know, she wants her kid to, to have success. So, um, or maybe it's them. You never know. But most importantly, maybe it's him. You know, maybe it's the VCs. Maybe it's that what they desire, what they define as success might not be what you define as success. What is successful for a VC might not be successful for you as a person. It might be very different, actually. Now, so I realized that this definition of what success is, and by extension, what failure is, it really depends with which kind of lens that you look at it. So I actually started realizing that while we were making a lot of money with Ted and Valley, I really felt that that was, and that that has been my most successful venture even without money in between. 
Because for me, Teton Valley was magic. It was about touching people. It was about creating something where nothing was there. It was about having people coming to you and saying, you've changed my life. I never thought I could do this. I never even thought that you could do a startup. And for me, that's powerful. That is my definition of what I want, what is favorable for me. So I realized, well, so if this depends, you know, this is like the song. He says potato, I say potato. So I got into all these discussions with my partners because my partner said like, you know, this, actually I remember my partner said like, Teton Valley is not gonna be successful. I said like, well, it is successful. And they said like, no, it's not successful, it's not making money. Of course, you should have guessed that my partners came from the consultancy world. So they have worked with McKinsey's, with banks, with IBM. And so for them, of course, success was about money. For me, it was about touching people. It was about helping people. So you say potato, I say potato. Now, I remember this pivotal moment in my life when I was giving a talk in the northern part of Spain, and, um, like in a university. And the uh, dean of the university asked me, so Alex, you've been here a while, you know, you've done startups, so what are your top three failures? And those, those are like those tiny seconds where your face goes like, and <laughs> I just started thinking like, what the hell am I gonna answer to that? And so what came out was something like this. Um, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> I don't do failure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it suddenly clicked to me like, what are you talking about? I don't fail. Because I had been thinking about this notion about failure and said like, you know, under my definition of what success is, I don't fail. What I do, actually a lot, is they make mistakes, a lot of them. But I don't consider them failure. Because here, we, here we're going deep into semantics. I don't consider m making mistakes failure. And of course, I went to the definition just in case I, wasn't, I, I was wrong about this. So the definition say, to misunderstand or misinterpret something. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I've done that a lot. All the time, every day. Actually, um, uh, I, I was just telling someone, uh, we just fucked the launch of Tech Europe. We're gonna launch today, but you know, things don't go according to plan and you cannot do that. And I actually, I redid the presentation yesterday night at 1 a.m. in the morning when I arrived here. So, you know, mistakes are all over and I do them every day. Every day I do mistakes. But mistakes is different to failure. For me, at least, it's, it's a very different conception. Now, there's this wonderful quote from Socrates. It said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know Nothing. And this is the kind of quote your parents actually tell you. And when you're little, you don't give a shit about it. You grow older and you still don't give a shit about it. And at one point, this kind of comes back to you and say like, hmm, maybe I have an issue here. Maybe um, I should approach things with a different perspective of, you know, I don't know anything. And this morning, they were talking about the business model, the lean, agile, how to go out of the building. All this stuff, it's the same. It's this quote. is you should know that you don't know anything. That despite you being an expert, you don't know what you're talking about. And of course, you have, again, the rainbows and the unicorns and people telling you failure is good. No, fuck you, failure is not fun whatsoever, n despite who tells you. But the problem is, on the other side of the spectrum, you have this. You know, a lot of, for a lot of startups, failure is not an option. And actually what they tell you about failure is, you know, it's about money. Success is about money. You need to make it big. You need to do an a IPO. You need to buy a Gulfstream. You know, that's the kind of measure of success. Either that or, you know, you need to have fame. You need to be on the, on the, uh, be the, the face of Newsweek magazine. I know people that love this shit. And finally, hey, you can look for glory, okay? How many of you want to have a statue be made of? There you go, some people love this shit, okay? There's someone very enthusiastic about this statue thing. <laughs> now, those things are fine, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're bad, I'm just saying that sometimes it's what someone else desires, or what a group of people think it is success. And it's funny because um, in the end, the greatest prison that people live in is the fear of what others think about. 
them. And I remember when I did my, my, my first startup, that was the fear. Now, with, in retrospective, I think about it, and it's like, it was the feeling that my parents were gonna tell me, you're not good enough, you know, you, you screwed those two years. It was the feeling of having to talk with my girlfriend at the time and say, hey, you know, for two years, uh, I really demonstrated everyone that I was unemployed, <laughs> like some people say about entrepreneurs. And so for me, it was very hard because it was always this nagging feeling that what are people going to think about me? And, you know, once you do your first startup and you crash your first startup, then is the moment where you start don't giving a shit what people think about you. And that's the moment where you start feeling really free to do a lot of magical stuff. And so I realized that coming back to his definition, my desired outcome was actually to be wiser. You know, have you seen the TV show The Mentalist? Someone, okay, so I want to be like that guy. I want to be like Patrick Jane. This guy comes into the crime scene and he goes like, it was the butler. That's awesome. I love to do that. I, I love to go there and say like, hmm, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, if I could wear a toga, I would do it. You know, it feels cool. But the thing is to be wiser, apart from growing old, you need to learn. And it is true that failure is about learning. But for me, it's not failure is about learning. It's that for me, the outcome, my success is that I learn about stuff. And while this seems extremely simple to understand on a screen, reality is that most people don't do this. Most people fail, they cry, they try again, and they fail on the same place. And they try again, and they fell again in the same place. Actually, there's a quote that says, like, the humans are the only animals in the universe that actually trip twice with the same stone. They say that for a reason. So this learning is actually not as easy as it looks like, and is way deeper than what a lot of the superficial comments that you hear about failure is. It actually goes way deeper. I'm going to show you how deep this actually ends up being. So this is a quote I love which is there are really only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. So having fear of failure is not a reason. Okay, you need to go all in. And the problem is when, when we talk about going all in, it doesn't mean with one startup. I always tell entrepreneurs, this is a long-term race. Anytime you talk with an successful entrepreneur, he can tell you, oh, I've done 10, 15, 20, 30 startups in my life. We're talking about people in their 70s, okay? And uh, it's amazing how the pattern is always the same. So this is a long-term run. This is not about one company. This means you have to go all in, and you need to start. So for me, if coming back to my experience was about learning, I said like, okay, what can I do to learn? What can I do to go deeper into this notion? So the way, the door. Anyone here practices any martial art? What do you practice? Taekwondo. What does do mean? OK. Do is a Japanese word for way. The problem is that most uh, Western countries understand way in a very different way as the Japanese. The way is this notion where you know where you start, but you don't have any freaking idea where you're going to end up. And it never stops. It never stops. In the same way that learning never stops. You know when you start, but you don't know when you're going to end. And for me, this was actually something that changed me. Who has ever heard the word Kaizen before? OK, what is Kaizen? Someone. Japanese stuff? Continuous improvement. And this is a fascinating word because a lot of companies use it, use it for lean ma uh, manufacturing. And in lean startups, we talk a, a lot about it, and in agile. And it's fascinating because every time I do a workshop with a company about this, everyone gets the, the uh, improvement part. But everyone forgets the notion of continuous. For people, improvement is about, OK, we've done something bad, and then we fix it. We've improved it. That's not what Kaizen is. Kaizen is every day until you die. This is a very Japanese notion that, you know, you have to strive for perfection, but 
you will never reach perfection. So it's a fucked up way of saying like, you're gonna devote all your life to, to do that and you're never gonna reach it. And that is fine. So for me, this word actually means a lot more than just like fixing stuff. Actually, what I started seeing that was that in my life, I was doing this all the time. That every time that something went wrong with my wife, I would sit down and, and ask myself, what have you done wrong? Because of course, guys, it's always our fault. Just, just so you know this, if you get married. And so you always sit down and think, what have I done wrong? I, I need to fix this. What can I do tomorrow to make it better? And every morning, I wake up in the morning and I think about this. What have I done this past week that I can do better? Every day, every hour, every second. This is not something you switch off. So you start seeing the difficulty of this. This is not something that you read a book and you suddenly go like, hey, Kaizen, haha, <laughs> let's continuously improve. Oh yeah, it doesn't work like that, okay? This is why I always tell people this is hard because this is a philosophy of life. It's not a framework. It's not a stage one, stage two, stage three thing. Now, I started from the very bottom and I said, okay, I'm gonna start with the notion that I don't know shit. And actually after doing three startups at the time, I still realized that even though I was supposedly an expert in a lot of things, I didn't really know anything. But this is hard. This is hard, especially like for, for people like me that we are on a stage, that when it, you go out of the stage, everyone comes to you and talks to you and emails you and everyone goes like, yeah, you're the guru of whatever, the guru of whatever. I hate that. I hate when people use that word. I still learn a lot. I work with literally hundreds of startups every year. And all of them, they tell me, oh, but you're such an expert. It's like, no, you don't get it. You don't get that I learn every time I sit down with someone new. I learn every time I help someone. This never ends. It never stops. Okay, so, but that being said, it's, it's hard when people are constantly reminding you, oh, you've been in the TV, you've been here, you've been there. So some people just like, keep growing this ego. And that was my case until I found a fantastic cure for that. And this is, a, this is a major risk of ego, which is all that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything. We think we become. There's a saying that says, your mind creates the world. If you think about being a failure, you will be a failure. If you think about being the most important person in the world, you will supposedly become the most important person in the world. That part never really works like that though. I don't know why. When it comes to negative stuff, it actually works like that. So, <laughs> no, but when you think about positive things, actually magic things happen. And listening is the key. And it's interesting that uh, Matt before said, um, don't listen to yourself, listen to the customers. I would actually argue that she, he's right, but I would first listen to me. And by listening to me is not listening to your wimps about, oh my God, oh my God, this is the coolest thing after Coca-Cola. No, it's about learn about yourself. Learn who you are. Learn what things make you tick, what things you hate. Learn when you're tense. This is what's called mindfulness. Learn about your body. Feel your body posture. Feel that maybe when you're angry at someone, you're like this. Or maybe you're looking somewhere else. Think about this stuff. Learn to listen. Actually, if I ask you, like, what can you tell me of this picture? Listening is not just about the hearing part but about observing. What can you tell me about this picture? Someone? Okay, apart from the obvious. <laughs> There's three people, what else can you tell me? There's four people. What else? The man sees something interesting? It's what? <laughs> and so you, so you say that he's looking at... What is he listening to? <laughs> so what can you tell me about um, Grandpa? What, what do you think he's listening at? 
His thinking? Yeah, what is he listening at? What? Hip hop? He doesn't really picture him as, hey, you never know. He might go all hippie hop on us. What? The grandpa has something interesting. Like, w w if you had to guess, what do you think he might be listening that's interesting? Spying on a competition. What? Spying on a competition. A competition? He's a spy. He's spying? He's what? A Bach, Bach Serena. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so you see that there's a lot more to the picture than just the picture. If I had to pick my guess, let me, let me pick my guess. I would say that he's actually listening to a soccer match or to some kind of sports. And he's listening to one, one year he's listening to a sports score and to the other one is trying to listen to what others are saying. And suddenly the waiter is coming while the other guy that he doesn't care a, a shit about because he looks more like a banker. While Grandpa looks from a very different generation by the way he clothes, the way he acts, the way he poses. Actually, if you see the way the other one, the other guy in the corner talks, he looks like a power person. He's actually leaning over. He's wearing like this kind of fancy scar. He could be Italian. Actually, this actually could be Paris, if you strike me, or maybe someplace in the Mediterranean. The mentalist. OK? <laughs> the mentalist. This is the key. It's about learning. It's listening to people. It's reading between the lines. It's actually observing clearly what your customers are doing, what your client is doing. What do they really mean when they talk about something? Because actually, the funny thing is when you do interviews with customers, they, don't, they never tell you the problem they have. They always tell you the solution they want. This is why when we were hearing about uh, being a business angel and investing in something that you get excited, it's because you became your customer. And you're so excited that you're looking at it from the, um, from the solution perspective, not from the problem perspective. So you as entrepreneurs need to develop a skill to be a mentalist about what really is the problem behind the solution they're giving us. And the funny thing is, each person you talk to, they'll give you a different solution. And you need to put one-on-one -on -one together and say, like, okay, what is common? What is the common denominator of the issue that both of them have, but that they represent with different solutions? Okay? So what I discovered was Aikido, which is a pretty modern martial art, and that, for me, changed my life. Because, you know, you come from all this startup thing, you've done startups, you've invested in startups, you've raised the fund, uh, you know, everyone tells you that you're the master of startups and whatever bullshit they tell you. And then a friend of mine said, hey, you should try Aikido. I said, like, Look, what is that? I don't like violence. I said, like, yeah, you just try it. I said, like, but I really, I don't like violence. And he said, like, well, try it and tell me afterwards. So I went to Aikido and I said, like, what the hell is this? Like it, and it literally changed my life. Uh, I, I know it sounds weird, but one of the things I learned, and this is a quote that some of our senseis tell, is there's always someone that's going to be stronger than you. And this is the beauty of Aikido, is, which is a martial art that is based on intelligence, not in strength or force. So you don't need to be fit. Actually, it's the only martial art in the world where you will see fat and old people practicing the martial art, okay? Because you don't need to have physical strength. It's about here. It's about intelligence. And it's funny because from time to time you have people that come to the dojo and they go like, a really tough guy. He goes like, yeah, I'm going to crush you. And you see this tiny Japanese guy and he goes like, okay, grab me. And they go like, uh. it's like, are you sure you're grabbing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go like, boom. And they throw this guy like three meters in the air. And everyone goes like, this has to be rehearsed. There is no way, physically no way he can actually do that. But he does. And so we always say this. Don't apply force to things. Don't go against nature. Don't go against the markets. Don't go against failure. There's always going to be someone stronger than you are. Always. And you're going to lose every time. You need to be intelligent about this. The other thing I learned about this was um, with all this ego and all this notion about failure, you know, I did my first exam in Aikido a year and a half ago. 
and uh, my wife was there, and I knew that I was the top student at the dojo. I was actually training with people that had been there longer than I had, and I could actually do the techniques better than they could. So I went to the exam, and my master basically screwed me, and I did a horrible exam. So when I finished the exam, my wife came to me and she said, I'm so disappointed with him because you were the best student and you were doing the best things and blah, blah, blah. And she was really pissed. And I, I was thinking about this and I was trying to be, you know, Kaizen about this stuff and say, okay, what have I done wrong? You know, once you, you know, the, 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 the bad vibes go down and go away, you start thinking, how can I make this? What did I do wrong? And so all these kind of things that I had, done, I had done wrong during the exam came to me and said, like, I stopped my wife and said, no, he's right. Actually, I am wrong, and I did it wrong, and it is my fault. And she was like, no, no, but you were the best student there. I said, like, but, you, but I just suddenly understood this really powerful meaning, which is behind this quote in Japanese, which is called Masagatsu Agatsu, which translated translates to... The real victory is not the victory against someone else, but against yourself. And this is actually one of the reasons why Aikido is the only martial art that has no competition. Because we don't care about which martial art is stronger. We don't care about how good you are or bad you are. Each of you has your own path. And this actually resonated so much with me about failure. Because I realized that it is my failure it, they are my mistakes. I shouldn't measure them by what others perceive it should be, but actually against myself. And every morning I should wake up and say, well, am I getting better than yesterday? Am I doing things better than the day before? And that's, what only, that's the only thing that at one point starts mattering to you. This actually turned into this notion of letting go. And letting go is one of the hardest things that you can have. When something supposedly has failed, according to people, it's hard to let it go. But the truth is, it's failed. It's already there. You cannot undo it. So just keep moving. Keep doing things. And in the same fashion, I told my wife, let it go. She was angry for three days with my, with my master. And I said, at the third day, I said, like, really? Like, it is me the one that has gone through this and you are the one that's worse than me? Like, let it go. It happened. It's okay. I need to learn from what happened. This is, became my philosophy of life, of things are not wrong. Things are not about failure. It's about what can I learn from this? And if you hold on to it, you won't see what to learn from it. If you're still emotional about this and you don't let go, you won't learn from it. Mm. Now this means that you really have to be yourself. That you don't have to be someone else. Don't let others tell you how you should be. Just try to be truthful to who you are. This is the best way to actually be happy and don't care about failure. Now, there's people that go like, yeah, but you know, I'm stubborn. I say that I'm going to take this startup and this is going to work and this is going to work and this is going to work and this is going to work. Well, nature has a funny thing. It's very uh, ironic, you know? And so you keep trying and nature will keep whacking you every single time. Despite how strong you think you are, nature is always stronger. The universe is always stronger. So if it doesn't work, it won't work, despite what you do. So just don't try it. Let it go. What you realize is that we do mistakes every day. It's like sunshine, you know? It goes up every morning, well, except in some parts at the north where it doesn't at some point. <laughs> but normally, the sun goes up every day until it implodes, but that's not anywhere near, hopefully. So normally, it goes up. Mistakes are the same. It's part of life. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? 
actually, the interesting part, and I love this quote, is in the sky, there is no distinction of East and West. People create distinctions out of their own minds and then believe them to be true. We are the ones that give meaning to what happens in nature. We are the ones that actually turn failure into something good or bad. There's no one else. It's our interpretation of this that matters. So this is a meaning that I, or a, sing, a sign that I really like because suddenly you start understanding that things are not black or white exclusively, that there's a lot of things that happen that depending who looks at it, might be one color or the other one, that some things are not just purely good or purely evil, but something in between, and that they actually flow with each other. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's what we will call bad, sometimes it's someone in between, it just flows. And this is life. As my, f my father once said to me many years ago, he said, life is what happens when you're looking somewhere else. Okay? And it is true. Life is, imagine life as a sequence of events. Just things that happen. You go to your job, you wake up in the morning, the toaster doesn't work, uh, you know, the uh, taxi doesn't come, whatever it is. It's just a sequence of events. It's us, the ones that make meaning. It's our interpretation of that what matters. And I was recently in Bulgaria uh, a week ago, and I was having this discussion with someone and I said, well, the thing, the fact is that for me, failure doesn't exist. And actually, mistakes or the notion of something wrong doesn't exist either. It's got to the point where I just accept what comes. Things happen. Okay, they happen. And people come to me and they say, dude, but there's this, like, all this amazing stuff happens to you. It's like, that's how I decide to live my life. Everything that happens to me, always see the bright side. It's interesting when Matt was saying that that's maybe one of our defects, that entrepreneurs, we always see the sunny side up. We always see the bottle half full. Well, I try to see it completely full every time, you know, <laughs> For, because we create our realities with the way we interpret things. We create the reality of how we interpret failure and the, the mistakes we make. I'll give you an exercise because some of you might be thinking, yeah, but you know, there's this asshole in my company that I just, I would like to punch him all the time. Um, there's this beautiful quote uh, from a master and he said, you know, the best way to live your life is actually thinking that everyone else is an enlightened being. It's a Buddha. It's someone that's super wise and that the one that's unwise is you. And that when that woman screams at you on the street, she's actually trying to teach you something. Think about this. I know it's hard, because when you're there wanting to punch someone, it's like, ah, and you think, enlightened being, he's trying to teach me something here. Okay, listen to this. I, you think this is a joke, but think about this. This is why I was telling you about, have an open mind about this talk. Think about this. Everyone tests us. Nature tests us every time, at every moment. So it's, again, how we perceive this that matters. So to give you some conclusions, again, there's no right or wrong. There's no good mistakes, bad mistakes, good failure, bad failure, learning failure, non-learning failure, potato, potato. It depends on your perception. Think about winning and competing with yourself. It's your victory against what you've done that matters. Nothing else matters. Not what others think, not what others have done, but your own victories against yourself. Learn to let go. The key to doing a lot of startups is like, okay, there goes another one. <laughs> See what happens, okay? And it's not, I mean, it is your baby, but it's like, who has more than one kid here? Whoa, a lot of people. Okay, so do you remember your first kid? how it was like, oh, the kid, oh, the kid, oh, the kid, oh, the kid, be careful with the kid. Then you have a second one, and your neighbor is like, careful with the kid, it's like, ah, <laughs> he's gonna be okay. <laughs> well, this is the same with startups, it's like, after a while, it's like, you learn to let go. You learn to let go. It's like, if we fail, we fail. It's current state of nature, it's okay. And most importantly, I would actually ask you, 
to learn to stop judging. Things, again, are not good or bad. They're neutral. It's us who decide which side we want to put it in the scale. Try to approach life and try to approach startups and try to approach what you do every day with a neutral perspective. No judgment. It just is. And I'll give you a final story that kind of illuminates this. There was once um, a woodcutter in the forest, and every morning he would go there and cut his wood, and he would go to the village and sell the wood. But one day in the morning, uh, he, tr he goes to the woodshed, and he cannot find his axe. Where is my axe? Where is my axe? Where is my axe? And suddenly he turns around, and he sees the kid's neighbor, the, na the, the kid from the neighbor. He looks, and he looks at the kid, and he goes like, Sneaky bastard. You can see his face, the glee in his eyes. He looks so suspicious. And he, the kid is like walking like this with, with the hand uh, inside his pocket. It's like he's hiding something. He stole from me, but I cannot prove it. But I know it was him. Two weeks pass by, and he goes back into the shed, and he takes out some logs, and he finds his axe. It's like, oh my God, it's been here all the time. Oh, thank God I find my good axe. And when he goes out, he sees the kid again. And he goes like, that is strange. He doesn't look that suspicious now. He doesn't have that, that way of walking again, that like he's hiding something. This is a beautiful tale. But how our perceptions change and how we perceive the world, depending on what we think. Thank you very much, and enjoy the ride. One of the uh, greatest entrepreneurs I know in, in this Nordic part uh, is uh, Miga Peldola, who, uh, um, by education, is a um, uh, theoretical philosophy major. And um, when it's he. It's the kind of thing I think about every morning. <laughs> No. When he graduated, he, he decided that uh, there's no job market, so the only thing you can do is to start a startup. Uh, so you are doing it vice versa, that, uh, doing a startup and then going to philosophy. <laughs> um, and uh, I've seen it also with um, other uh, young entrepreneurs. Uh, do, you do you see it as a phase that, uh, as an entrepreneur, you have to go through it at some <laughs> point uh, of time? That, uh, what's the meaning of life? And, uh, <laughs> it's and 42, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh. <laughs> um, that's a good question. To be honest, I've seen both sides. I've seen people that are successful entrepreneurs, that they do startups, and they just don't give a shit about this. They just keep doing their businesses, and, and that's fine. I always tell people, are you happy with what you're doing? If you're happy doing that, then why would you want to go into philosophy? It's a really bad choice. Mm -hmm. Now, in my case, I felt that something wasn't there, that the way I perceived things was changing. And actually, I was working with a lot of startups. So as I said, I, I normally see an, an average of like 200 startups every year. And so I got experiences from all these people, and I saw these things going wrong so many times that I, th I, s I thought, you know, for every person that has no issues, there's like 100 that they have issues. So I said, like, well, maybe we should approach these, this from a different perspective. Questions from the audience? Up one there, one there. Let's take this and this. Yeah. You can scream. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the... No, no, no. Oh, I will it's the internet guys. I will repeat the question. Okay, ask a question, I will repeat it. Failure at the mic level. Thank you. This is really, really inspiring. Uh, the question is, knowing that you know at the moment, what would you have done differently if you would start <laughs> again from your that First, first startup. That's an easy question. I always get this question. Uh, I would have never done anything different. Because the, the, of point, the point is, the only way I'm here is by having done what I've done. 
There's no other way. So I wouldn't trade it. I would never trade that. I think you are who you are. And as I said, things happen in the past. Let them go. Question from the front. Okay, Markus Palau from uh, GoWork a bit. And I wanted to ask that what is the story with tech.eu that uh, your partner and you have never been in the same country before? Well, I don't uh, yeah, we, we, we've been together without any touching, but we've been together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's an interesting story. For those of you that, that want to hear about uh, distributed companies. Um, so a bunch of us from the kernel, we left the kernel, and we missed writing about cool stuff. You know, there is no publication that goes in depth about stuff. So here you guys have Arctic Startup, and uh, you have TechCrunch, and a bunch of other things. But those are mostly breaking news. We really missed like the analytical stuff, and even philosophical, if you want to see it like this. And so a bunch of us ex-editors from the kernel decided we were going to launch something where we could actually write. And while we were doing this, I was trying to have Robin on board. But he was at the next web, and then he wasn't. So we said, hey, you know, you want to come on board? So that's how we created TechEU. But the interesting thing is that it's six of us, and each of us live in a different country. I live in Spain. Robin just went back to uh, Brussels. And John and Adrian are in UK, but different places. And Roxanne is in France. And uh, Ivo is in Croatia. And we've never had the team together in the same place. I've been with Ibo, I've been with Robin, I've been with John, and each of us actually know each other. But we've never been together in the same room. And we've launched a company, or we're trying, not extremely successful in the time schedule, though, but we're trying. Uh, we've raised money, and we haven't been together in the same room. I mean, it's the power of the internet how this has changed. And uh, just before someone asked this, isn't too bad to have like five partners in a company, terrible idea. Terrible idea. We know shit is going to happen. But that's the interesting part. We know this, so it's OK. <laughs> a question from the... A question based on the last slide. Uh, what do you think? Who will be next year's better Ferrari driver? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's funny. This one is Hiki Kovalainen. So for those Finnish people here, um, I have no idea, to be honest. Um, I would love to see Alonso winning. That would be cool. But uh, I have no idea who's going to be the new, uh, the new pilot with him. I used to be a huge fan. And then, you know, like a good Spaniard, I love bitching about stuff. And so then Alonso s stopped winning, and I stopped watching Formula <laughs> One. <You know? laughs> that shit happens. Uh, yes. OK. Um, you talked about learning about uh, mistakes and failures. What do you think about learning of success or how, how to <laughs> How to to that part too, or or can can we mix them? <laughs> okay, let's see if I've done a good job here. Who can answer him? No one. Success is failure. <laughs> there you go. Success is failure. You're still seeing things either black or white, either good or bad. Learning from success, learning from failure. It is one and the same. It is the same. It is learning about something that happened. It is your interpretation of good or bad. But going to your exact question, uh, before you answer me again, um, I, I, I'm a true believer on learning from success. Uh, we always uh, kind of focus on the bad stuff or what people think is the bad stuff. But I really think you can learn way more from success. And uh, I'll just give you an example. I love celebrating success. People take success for granted. But I'll just give you an example. Uh, one of the reasons why we didn't launch TechEU before was because we had a lot of issues with designers. Anyone here is a designer, like graphic designer, web designer? Someone? No? A bunch of them? OK, I'll give you shit, guys. It's horrible working with them. OK, and I've, I've worked in technology for, I'm a computer engineer myself. It's horrible working with them. And uh, so we had issues. So we, could, we, we, we were actually fired by several designers. That's that. And um, what actually happened is uh, the wife of one of our partners said, hey, my wife does graphic design. Maybe she can do a logo. 
And so she did it. And the first iteration of the logo was horrible. And we said, like, we don't like this shit. And it was, you know, it's the wife of your partner. So it was kind of a little bit touchy issue. Um, but it, so she said, OK, so what exactly do you guys want? And so we said this, 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 and this. And uh, so she came up with some very good designs. And um, today, Robin is in the next web in Romania. And he just showed it on the stage, the logo. So someone took a picture and tweeted it. This was like three hours ago. And sh she tweeted the picture. And she said, oh, congrats. So saw the picture and said, like, whoa, that's awesome. So I retweeted and said, so we finally unveil our new logo. And it started getting comments from people on Twitter saying, like, whoa, that's a cool logo. Congrats. That's a nice logo. So no, people normally would stop there and say, like, hey, yeah, woo, cool. So what I did is I got the image. I sent it to my partner's wife. And I CC him, of course, before I get into any trouble. And I said, hey, thank you so much for doing the logo. People are loving it. So congrats on it. And she was super happy. She answered me like an hour and a half ago. And she said, like, whoa, I'm so happy. And he answered me. And he said, whoa, dude, thank you very much. I think we should celebrate success. It's very easy to forget about what people put there and that actually works. And because it works, no, one's think, no one thinks about it. But you, we should think about it, because you can learn so much also from that. Uh, I, I meant this. Uh, OK, that's a very good, uh, good answer. Thank you. <laughs> but but, but I, meant, I meant this um, uh, economical success, which is still there. But most of the stories which are about uh, somebody are stories. They are not true. But do you know any good, uh, good ways to learn from success or get in, into the real story of successes, or, or you have have you seen any you can tell? I'm going to give you an answer you're not going to like. Um. <laughs> so so it's the question is more about uh, how to learn somebody else's success. Yeah, how to learn from someone else's success. Um, the bad news is that you can't. Um, you can listen. They can mentor you. You can actually learn valuable things from them. But the truth is, a lot of what makes success is untangible stuff. It's things that are not there. Uh, Matt was saying like this. I, I love this notion of the uh, what he called the mood board. Mm -hmm. I love that because that's very untangible. And someone asked him like, "What? How? How do you measure this?" And he said like, <laughs> "You know." And I got I got what he was meaning because it, it it's like untangible stuff. It's like you can see the spark on someone's eyes when he goes through that. So, going back to the question, um, there is no way because. A lot of what successful people do, it's innate in them. It's magic they have on their own. And it's not until you've experienced that that you will be capable of doing this. There's a great quote about this. And they said, um, knowledge can be learned. Uh, uh, wisdom has to be experienced. And there is no way around that, despite how hard we try. We can learn ways to do things. We can learn from their mistakes. We could not make the same mistakes. But in my experience, every time I work with startups and I tell them something, I go like, I go all mentalist on them. Don't get me wrong. So I go there, and they go like, we have this issue. And I go like, here. I go like, no, no, no. We're talking about this stuff here. No, no, but we're talking about, I know what you're talking about. I'm telling you, the issue is here. Oh, yeah, now it's Alex with his crazy ideas and crazy philosophies. And then they go away. Three months later, they come and go like, holy shit, you were so right. It was here. <laughs> and the problem is, despite how many times I tell them, they're not going to change it. Because yeah. they're not at the point of changing that. They don't have the background. They don't have the experiences. They don't have the life experiences that you've had to, to get to reach that conclusion. But the sad stuff is that the investors uh, tell tells you to learn from success. OK, I'll tell you. How many of you <laughs> actually? Investors, they say, you have to learn from success. Yeah, yeah, of course. I and mean, they tell you the st success stories, which they yeah, know. Yeah, they tell not you a everything. lot of stupid things. Like, yeah, yeah, we will invest, and then they don't invest. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is a great idea, and then three months later, it's not such a great idea, and everyone's losing money in the stock market. So, you know, if again, trust on yourself. Don't trust on what people say. You know, I, I've seen a lot of investors saying a lot of stupid things, and then you see their funds, you see how they pef perform, and you go like. OK, that's why you shouldn't listen to them. But then again, it's your decision to listen or not to them. But to be honest, my experience tells me that 
how, despite how many times I tell people, careful here, careful here, this is like with the kid. Again, a lot of you have kids. First day with the bicycle. Careful, careful, careful. He's going to go down. No matter what you tell him, he's going to crash the bike at some point. Maybe not the first day, maybe not the second day. I was, I was one of those. You know, there's some people that don't have very good balance, so the first day they will go down and they will hurt themselves. I have an extraordinary balance, which means that the first day was, whoa, this is easy. Second day, whoa, this is easy. Third day, whoa, this is easy. Fourth day, my parents go like, there's no need for us to be here anymore. And that's the day you crash the bike. <laughs> Overconfidence, <laughs> it's called. So, you know, everyone is different. And, and yes, you should look at success, but don't expect to become them because you can't. Because you need to experience it. You need to learn from your own mistakes and your own perspectives and your own little things from daily life. And despite what people say, you've seen House, MD, everyone lies. <laughs> Me included. So be careful with what you take out of this talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>